Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage unboxing video. Today we're going to look at AMT's and 1959 Chrysler Imperial kit. This one's been out on the market for a little bit, but today we actually get to unbox one and check this thing out. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. So now let's go all the way back to the late 1950s where we get to check out this amazing 1959 Chrysler Imperial model kit by AMT. Now this is a 125th scale kit, a hardtop customizing kit, and you get a lot of really cool customizing features in here. Now unfortunately there is no engine, so this is a basic curbside kit, but again all these custom features make up for it. So here we have an image of the custom hood scoop, the grill bar, and the Continental tire, as well as a wonderful three-quarter front view of our 1959 Imperial. On this side of the box we can see that this is an amazing three-in-one customizing car. You can build it as a hardtop, a racing version, or a very wild custom. You also get bonus pad printed white wall Firestone tires in this kit. Now this is a new process that AMT has come up with build this stylish stock Chrysler Imperial. So here we have the rear three-quarter view of our car. And again, look at how cool these fins are. And it's also got the trunk mounted spare tire as well. And on this side of the box, we can see all the new features of this amazing kit, featuring all new custom and racing decals. These stock features are wheel covers, a Landau roof, chrome grille, front and rear bumpers, and dual headlights. Now here's the extra customizing parts that are also shown on the front of the box, but here is the rest. So we have louvers and a whole bunch. We have aerials, mirrors, and spotlights, as well as fender skirts, moon discs, a roll bar, lake pipes, and these are really weird cool ones. There's a single pipe and then they all split off into separate bits. We have the Landau roof, the lowering blocks, scoops and tailpipe extensions, rear deck spare tire, or a continental kit type of tire, and then a lot of these custom fins. On the bottom of the box, we can see the silhouettes of all the parts in the part overview. And like I said, there is no engine in this kit, so it is very basic. But down here you get a lot of the chrome details, you get a cool decal sheet, the pad printed white wall tires, clear glass screws to hold it together, as well as metal axles. This is a kit intended for skill level 2, for ages 10 and up, and will require some glue and paint. We also have the Round 2 website down below, and again, a really cool stuff in here. So now let's remove the lid on our 59 Chrysler Imperial. I hope you are excited. And we can see our instructions in here. We also have the decal sheet, which I'm going to leave upside down right now so that we can check it out at the end of the video for more excitement. Here we've got the body, the interior, and the chassis all in one bag, all sort of pre-assembled. We also have our clear glass right there. And then we have the custom features and regular features of the kit, as well as the chrome. And then we've got a little bag down here with our tires and our axle and our screws in here. So I will clear all this out of the way, and then we can check out that really cool instruction sheet. Your amazing AMT 1959 Chrysler Imperial model kit comes with this instruction sheet as you see here. The amazing instruction sheet will help you guide you through your model build and make for the most excellent model that you can ever have. <laughs> I'm trying to sound like one of those old 1950s uh, car commercials or, you know, demonstration films, I guess they were. This kind of makes me think of a TV set the way this is, you know? Remember the old TV sets had the curved edges, not just a straight square one? Okay, so here we have our 3-in-1 assembly customizing kit instruction sheet. You can see stock, racing, and custom down here. This kit will build any one of the three models shown. This, these sketches and descriptions will help you decide which model you prefer to build. Study the parts and instructions carefully before you decide which model to build and also which accessories you wish to use. You will notice... 
You will notice there are many more parts and decals than you can use, but we feel that with careful planning, you can create a truly individualized car. Now keep this in mind, folks, because what you want to do is keep those parts for customizing other cars. Stock Car Racer, special accessories such as a roll bar and tachometer together with decals of numbers and emblems, etc. have been provided to construct this model. For further realize, realism, the hubcaps or moon discs should not be used. Do not use those. Use a factory steel wheel. Scale model. This is perhaps the easiest model of the three to construct. Since it is a stock model and none of the special accessories such as fins, aerials, exhaust extensions, or customizing decals should be used. No, no, no. And then we have the customized car. With a variety of accessories and decals provided, the number of customizing combinations are endless. Fins, louvers, continental tires, lake pipes, air scoops, spotlights, and special decals are but a few of the many items provided to assist you in creating a truly distinctive customizing model. So the main question to ask is, how will Natey build this car? So here we have step one. Now, as you can see, these are like original reprints of the instruction sheet style that they used to use back in the 50s. So there is a lot of written as well as some images. So it says, decide which body accessories you wish to use. Holes to receive pins on bottom of accessories have been molded partway through, partway through the body and may be seen from underside of car. Only punch holes for desired accessories. So here it says, there's the holes for your fender mirrors. Here's spotlight holes over here, antenna holes more toward the rear, and then rear deck tire cover holes right in this area here. Step two says to cement the Landau top in position shown and allow cement to dry thoroughly before proceeding with next section. So here's the Landau top going onto the body. You know what I just realized? These images make me think of the old Mad Magazine. Remember those? Now I'm not talking Mad Magazine from the 70s. I'm talking Mad Magazine from the 50s and early 60s. Remember, they had illustrations just like this kind of stuff. Really cool. I like, I like the old Mad Magazine. How about you? Let me know in the comments down below. Yeah, I knew this model kit reminded me of Mad Magazine from the 50s and early 60s. Check out this amazing artwork by Rick Tulka from Mad Magazine. This came out in 1962, but it's a parody of Tomorrow's Parents. But the parents are like supposed to be teenagers from the 50s. And I do believe this is supposed to be like in the 70s or something that um, Rick is imagining here. But again, look at all that line work and artwork. And then look at the instructions again for that Chrysler. Like basically, couldn't this fit right into that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like Mad Magazine stuff. But look at this here. This article is actually kind of funny because it's... Um, Again, looking at uh, the future of parenting from like a 50s sort of perspective as these teenagers being parents. But here in this panel, it shows like the grandparents, which are them in the future because their kids wanted to be doctors and lawyers, which was really square daddy-o. <laughs> but these are like the grandkids. So they're supposed to be, you know, taking up the, the mantle of the grandparents and they're dressed up like back in the 50s again. And they're coming out and these are the parents now they're grandparents but take a look at this car in the back here now doesn't that make you think of the crazy fins that are on this chrysler kit <laughs> it's got me thinking of them so again like i said the forward 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 look but again really funny stuff that this kind of equates in my mind to mad magazine and then there's the their kids which are now the parents of these kids in the background as doctors and lawyers with this big house. So I find this really funny because these kids are Generation X, which is my generation. And uh, basically it's, but it's from like a 1962. So before Gen X actually was Gen X, this is sort of what this artist thought of what these kids would be. So I find this funny. Here are two typical parents of 1975. Fred and Ginger, named after their own parents' idols, so Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Typical. Typical is their last name. 
proudly posing behind their two children, five-year-old Tuesday Sandra, typical, and six-year-old Kingston Trio, typical. So again, the Kingston Trio was a music group back in the 50s. But it's funny, I find this funny because my parents were teens, or they weren't teens in the 50s, they were in their young 20s when they were in the 50s. So this is my family, man. <laughs> it's really funny. Okay, step three. Cement instrument panel to interior. Cement the steering wheel in place. Cement gear shift in position as shown. If building stock car racer, apply tachometer decal and cement tachometer in position on steering wheel column. So here it is. There's our interior molded as a one piece bucket, which also includes the bench seat in front and the bench in the rear. There's our gear shift lever going down in position on the console or column, I mean on the floor basically. We also have our instrument panel, our tachometer and the steering wheel. Now I do think the instrument panel is separate because they're calling it out as being separate. Step four, cement fender mirrors in place. Rear view mirror may be placed on dashboard or on roof in step five. So here we have the rear view mirror, which you can mount up on the roof or down on the top of the dashboard and our fender mirrors going in place. Now remember, only use the fender mirrors if you drilled that hole out. Step five, cement windshield and interior to body. Cement tail light in place. So here we can see our interior, our completed interior, as well as the window section being dropped into the body on these mounting posts. Now there's two in the back and two in the front. And we also add in our tail lights down here onto the fins. Step six, lowering blocks are provided with the chassis and if desired, the car can be lowered in either the front, the rear or both. St study illustration below and cement lowering blocks in place from top of chassis. So they would slot in like that. And notice this weird line in here. That means that the artist couldn't draw the chassis at the full length. So they basically, you know, quote unquote, broke it here and here, and then kind of put it together, but showed that line so that you know this is shortened up. Step seven, assemble tire to wheel and wheel back. If you are building the customized car, cement the four hubcaps or moon discs in place. Do not use hubcaps on the stock car racer. It says note, see step nine and determine if the rear deck tire disc, a hubcap or moon disc insert is to be used in the continental insert or rear deck tire cover. So here you're making four of those wheels and tires, actually wheels, because the tire is part of the wheel. So there's your wheel back, your wheel front, the tire itself, and then you've got the option of the moon disc or the hubcap. Step eight, slip axles through holes in lowering blocks and place wheels onto the axles. Cement front and rear bumpers in position on body. Attach chassis with the four screws provided. So basically you're putting the wheels into the chassis first with the metal axles, connecting them all, and then dropping the chassis into the body, which is upside down. And then you're putting in your rear bumper and your front bumper, and then you would add in your screws. Step nine, the rear deck tire cover may be used with either rear deck tire disc, hubcaps, or moon disc. You have a choice of using either the rear deck tire cover or the Continental kit, but for proper appearance, only one should be used. So you don't want you know, a set of twin wheels in the back. So there's your antenna being dropped in and you've got your choice of three here, the moon disc, the hubcap, or the rear deck tire disc, which has this cool emblem in the middle. Now I do believe that is a stock Imperial thing. There is the rear deck tire cover being mounted in. This little disc here is basically one of these flipped on its uh, side, or basically, you know, put down that way. <laughs> and uh, that's it all going onto the back of the car. And now for all you crazy cats out there that dig the customizing scene, way to go, daddy-o. Here we have custom parts assembly, grill bars and vents, cement grill bar in position. Scoops may be cemented to hood or front fenders. So here you got small air vents, almost mount them sort of like a Buick in a way. 
Then you can add in spotlights. There's the large scoops going on the hood. And then here's this custom grill bar being glued in place on the stock grill. Next up, Hepcats, we have air scoops and louvers. Shown below are other suggested locations for louvers and scoops. So here you have these small scoops, which are mounted over the wheels, much like a uh, 1970 Plymouth, really. And then you've got the bigger hood scoop going up there. And then down here, you can add your louvers onto the sides of the fins out the back, or glue the small air vent onto your fender skirts, or do a combination of whatever you like. You've heard of the Chrysler forward look. Well, here is the AMT forward, forward, forward look. Actually, this is going right into the 29th century, skipping the 20th or the 21st century and moving way beyond. Check this out. Fins. The tail fin may be cemented to center of rear deck and small fins cemented to each side as shown. Large fins may be cemented to rear deck or rear fenders. File to suit contour. So take a look at this. You have the large fin and then you have the large air scoops gluing on the back. Then you have the small fins here and this tail fin, which is like right off of a jet airliner. The small fins glue onto the sides there. So again, imagine this thing. This is huge. This is like, you know, you've heard of boats. Well, this is a boat aircraft. And basically this is like a massive combination just to get as many tall fins on as you can. Now you can't chrome up the top of the car without flipping it over and gussying up the bottom. So here we have exhaust and fender skirts. Smith lake pipes into position on underside of chassis. Exhaust extensions may be attached at rear of chassis. Smith fender skirts in place. So here you add on your exhaust extensions onto the ends of those exhaust pipes. You got your fender skirts there and then these really crazy lake pipes. So you've got one tube coming out of the engine from the exhaust manifolds. Now remember, there is no complete engine in this. It's just molded in underneath on the chassis. And then they have one, two, three, four, five of these little tubes that pop out the sides of those lake pipes. So again, really crazy kind of stuff. Actually, this is now really reminding me more and more of a Mad Magazine article. I, I'm going to see if I can find it for this video. So you can't customize the front of this car without, of course, customizing the rear. And here we have the Continental tire. Now this is different from the stock version, which was mounted on the trunk lid. This is actually mounted more conventionally on the back of the car. So it says Smith Continental insert in place with side A out or side B out with chosen hubcap option. Smith Continental tire assembly and bumper extension to rear bumper. Smith license plate to bottom of bumper extension or Continental tire cover. So here it has the Continental insert right there. Or you could use the one that was on the back of the trunk lid if you want a hubcap in the center. So there you got your moon disc or your stock hubcap. Or again, that really cool rear deck tire in disc, which has the Imperial logo, I do believe. And then you can add your license plate in under here. And these are the bumper extensions, which are going to hold that tire in place. On the back of the instruction sheet, we have this really wonderful image showing us our decal placement for our 59 Chrysler. Now up top, they show you the race edition. Can you imagine racing this thing in an oval track? I mean, this car is huge. So it's got number 59, of course, because it's 1959. You know, I, I just, I hate that. <laughs> you know, in the real world, somebody wouldn't go out and go, I'm going to buy a 51 Plymouth and then stick 51 on there. They probably put like number 13 or 29 or something on there. But at any rate, this is sort of how AMT always does these. So if you want 29 on here, check out AMT's 1929 Ford. I'm sure there's one in there. Uh, anyway, so here you get custom special on those rear fins and number 59 with the crown. Oh, I guess that is for the Imperial. And then if you want the customized car, you got down here, you've got all these cool pinstripes and even little pinstripe motifs. But 
these are the type of scallops you have on here, scallop stripes. That's the word I'm looking for, the word of the day. It even gives you the numbers for the decals on your kit. But again, really cool stuff. And this will look really beautiful, all, all gussied up. Now, another cool thing you get on the back of the instruction sheet is the customizing accessories. Here we've got fender skirts, rear deck tire cover, tail fin, two and three eighths fins, two of those, lowering blocks, two, uh, two and one eighth inch fins. So these are in the heights, of course. Continental tire cover, large fins, small fins, and a Landau top. And then we've got chrome accessory group. You got the roll bar, large air scoops, grill bar, tailpipe extensions, tachometer, hood air scoop, rear deck tire disc, rear view mirror, louvers, moon discs, hubcaps, gear shift handle, small air scoops, license plate, continental tire back, bumper extension, fender mirrors, spotlights, antennas, and then those crazy lake pipes. But I mean, look at all this stuff. You can use it on anything. You got all these extra fins. Man, just glue them down anywhere. Here I've turned our camera to the tall view because this is a very tall drawing and we need to see it all. So here we have 59 Imperial customizing tips. Shown below is the suggested mounting of various fins on top of rear fender. File top of fender flat as shown and cement fin in place. If desired, smooth and lead cement line after cement dries. Leading means to fill and style with a body putty. Now I'm going to make a suggestion. Cross sand this thing once you glue it on with your filler and your sandpaper. So to cross sand you would go this way first at a 45 degree angle followed by a reverse 45 degree angle coming back and that will cut and smooth out the uh, um, the filler onto this panel is what I'm trying to say. So here it says use two and one eighth or two and three eighths or large fin file off shaded area right there. <laughs> Glue that on. So it says along with the two and three eighths fins minted as shown in the previous view, you can add the two and one eighth fin to the outside of rear fender in the in line with tail light. These fins may also be used on inside or outside of rear fenders in other ways as described in following sections. Sorry, I'm trying to read this like sideways going up. <laughs> File off ring and then glue on your two and three eighths or large fin. Or you could put it this way coming out, sort of like um, 59 Chevys and Fords had the fin coming sideways out instead of up and down. A more advanced fin treatment is shown below. First cement large fin to top of rear fender, then fin on the inside. The fins may be leaded, puttied, after cement has set. <laughs> kind of read that like William Shatner. Okay, anyway, so what you're seeing here is the large fin. So we've got the fin on the body, then you file that flat. Then you've got the large fin up here, and then you've glued the two and one eighth fin on the inside and the two and three eighths fin on the outside, or you could switch that around if you want. And then you cut off the back here, and then you can cement your tail light in right about here, I think it is. But anyway, these are their customizing tips for this great Chrysler Imperial. So now with all that gas out of the way, Daddy-o, let's check out our hip 1959 Chrysler. Can you dig it? All right, so what I have here is the body with the interior and the chassis. I just basically pulled this out of the bag. So I can pop these out, but you can see the nice fit and finish in here for such an old kit, provided my camera is not going to go out of focus. What the heck? All right, anyway, so take a look at this side profile here. Really cool stuff. Again, you got that nice groovy stripe right up the side, the body molding, as well as our fender skirts and the roof pillars, as well as the door handles and the little ring on the back. You also have Imperial script right above the chrome trim. Again, really cool stuff up on the hood, Imperial. There is a bit of a parts tree cutoff right there. See it? So you're going to have to get rid of that. Look at how nice those tubes fit into the lower portions there. 
Again, they will screw in nice and tight and look really good. And then out back, we've got that huge deck lid. There are some sink marks where those pillars are up underneath, uh, right into there. So again, cross sanding. So sand one way and in the other direction, and you will be able to get that nice and smooth without the sink marks in. There is quite a bit of flash running around this kit, as you can see, especially up into this quarter panel, sail panel up here. Sail panels on the roof, Trevor, come on. <laughs> Again, the chassis underneath is very simplistic. I think you've seen this in a Johan promo. Again, look at how long that engine is and the exhaust pipes just go straight to the back and then out. They do kick up around the differential, but again, that's molded as one place, in one piece, pardon me, in one place. <laughs> you got the leaf springs, which is typical of Chrysler back then. I'm not too sure when the torsion bars came in. I think this is supposed to be a conventional front end, but it just basically looks like one big gigantic tube up the center. So if you can find another Chrysler kit that might match the dimensions, you uh, could be in some good luck in getting an undercarriage going on. Okay, squeaky. Again, very simple underneath here. You will have to scrape down some of the little mold marks on here to get this to sit nice and flat. There's that interior going in on the four mounting posts. Look at that, it's like the steering column will go right through the center of the floorboard there on the driver's side. Again, really neat stuff. But here you can see big mold marks. So use that number 16 hobby blade to get rid of that, which is in the interior tub. The seats are all molded as one piece. There are more mold marks in each of the four corners. Little speaker back there in the center. Again, really basic stuff, but this is how the kits were back in the day. You can see those door panels again too. Got nice armrests in there. Underneath, yeah, this is really harking back Johan. Almost makes me think of that 1960 Plymouth. Interesting, Chrysler's Plymouths all molded this way back then. Looking under the hood, you got this nice little brace coming in here, just molded in, <laughs> part of the molding. So if you were to make this more complicated by opening up the hood and all that stuff, you'll have to sand that flat. It's interesting, it goes right from the center of the window roof pillar up and around and out. Don't think I've ever seen that before. Interesting way to reinforce a kit. Same as up underneath on the trunk lid. Now these are the holes that they were talking about in the instructions for drilling out. You can see they're sunken in. Makes it really easy to, to find out where to put them and keeps them parallel as well. You can kind of see them through the top of the fender. Maybe if I had my light up underneath. But again, overall, I think this is really cool and you will have fun building this, even though it is basically a promotional style model kit. So I thought for a little bit of fun, I would show a 1933 Chrysler Imperial here and compare it to the 59 Chrysler Imperial by AMT. Now this Imperial is actually 124 scale because it's Atelier, but this one is 125th being AMT. So just imagine either this one being a little smaller or this one being a little bigger, but you can basically see that the 59, although you think of this as being a big car, is basically the same dimensions as the 33 Imperial. And I find that really quite interesting because again, you figure these are big, long monsters, boats and blah, 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 but yet they had them in 33 as well. So again, really cool stuff here. So now let's, let's continue with our 59 review. So here we have the white plastic components for the custom and the stock. And as you can see, there's not too much going on outside of the three components for the body, interior, and chassis. But what we have is the stock wheels. We have a convertible top if you don't want to glue on the Landau top. You've got an extra option going on there. We also have the dashboard, the steering wheel, and then we get into our fins here. These are the tall fins, I guess. And then we've got our other fins going down here. We have these little half curve ones for the trunk lid. Then we have our lowering blocks. You can see how big that axle hole is. It's huge. It's beyond the 1 16th rod. It's more like a 1 8th. We also have a sheet of louvers. So keep this in mind. 
For a future customizing, you can cut these into strips, four strips, or use it as one big pad in the back or something. Use these on other cars. Here's that gigantic aircraft, or maybe even shark fin, depending on how you're looking at it. And then we have the spare tire cover, as well as the continental cover. Now I do believe you glue these two together. And then here we've got fender skirts. And again, these parts, they're very basic, but man, they're really cool as far as customizing bits go. Let's just clear this. Okay, so take a look at those fender skirts. They also have a bit of a scoop going on in the front. Again, flash is pretty high. Flash! Ah! Here are two little pins, and these would line up with the wheel openings, the wheel arches. So there you can see them. That's a bit better. There are mold marks in here, which you can clean up. But again, these are really cool looking fins. They're uh, <laughs> skirts. My goodness. Here's our roof. And look at that nice curve in there again. Really cool stuff. There you've got some really big posts coming down on that roof. What was that for? I can't remember. Maybe just to glue it into the glass. Again, mold mark in there. Quite a bit of a sink mark going on. And a sprue cutoff point, so you're going to have to use your files to clean that up. There is a little copyright 2019 from round two. But again, really really nice roof going on there. There's our dashboard. Now, I don't know if you actually get any decals for the gauges. I do believe this is an aluminum color in here or um, yeah, some kind of metal, maybe even a gold. You got your little AM radio down here. There's the glove box going on. Again, really cool stuff. Uh, speaker or a heater up there for the front windshield. Underneath on the back there are mold marks, but being a dashboard, no one's going to see those. Clean them off just to uh, ease your own frame of mind. There's our steel wheels. Again, looking like wheels that Nady would use <laughs> on our uh, tire balancing machine. There's the convertible top or the convertible boot because it's folded down. But again, really cool looking. And again, we've got our fins. These are very basic. They're just basically flat. Again, you've got these big posts popping down here to mount the glass in. You also have the hooks, same as on the Landau top. So those would go pop in and fill the body. So basically you could pop the top on and off. You don't even need to glue it into the glass. So maybe I might consider that on my build. Now take a look at that big whale fin. Again, it's smooth, but uh, oh, these little bits here. Those must be the ones they're talking about, which glue. Yep, they glue onto the fin, just like that. So left and right hand side onto that big whale tail or jet fin. There you've got the Imperial logo with Imperial script down below on that nice uh, tire cover. And then there's the one. Now that little hole in the center would be to align up your hubcap. And then the two pins are to go in through the top of the trunk lid. So again, really cool. Really cool. Oh, and if you turn that over, then you've got your your little mounting for your uh, hubcap. <laughs> Come on, Trevor, think. Okay, there's the steering wheel. And again, it's got a big thing on there. So you're going to have to... My suggestion is to try to snip it back. Don't like snip it right off along the edge of the wheel if you can and then use your files just to get it close to the actual rim of the wheel. But again, I think they captured that steering wheel from the Chrysler pretty nicely. And then our final part, there's those louvers. Again, really nice. You could use those on almost anything. You could even just keep this and make a power box for your diorama and have all four louvers as one of the back doors, just like a outdoor power box would look. There's the lowering blocks, and they do have mold marks, so file those flat. And then we've got our various fins again. So a lot of cool stuff going into this kit, even though the part count is not big. It is well received, I guess. I don't know what you want to say. But man, this will be really... A, I think the customizing in this is really the way to go. Building it stock would be 
nice, but kind of plain. So I'd recommend getting three of these things. Next up we have our chrome parts trees and boy there is a lot of chrome going on in here. There's the chrome cover for the Continental kit as well as the wheel backs. And there we've got our baby moon hubcaps. We have more louvers in chrome. Then we've got our rear bumper and our front bumper as well as the guard here for the Continental kit. There's our roll bar. There's these crazy headers. Look at these things. Actually, they're, yeah, one, two, three, four, and then one at the back for five. And then all these little chrome scoops or whatever. And then we've got our rear view mirrors, exhaust tips, and tachometer. And there's a little insert for the spare tires. These are also scoops. You could strip the chrome off these if you want. It's all up to you. And there's that center grill insert. So let's just take a look at what's going on here. Quite a bit to digest. Oh, there's actually the rear view mirror right here where my finger is as well. Take a look at that grill. Even has 1959 license plate molded in place. Very deep around the sides, wrapping right into the car. Now the headlights, you can put a little wash in there just to make them look more realistic, as well as a black wash into the grill. Or do what Pete does and grind the grill back until you can start seeing light through it. Very tricky though. Uh, there we've got our hubcaps. Boy, they look so tiny. <laughs> our full baby moon hubcaps, as well as those chrome louvers. Again, really cool stuff. That rear bumper is so futuristic. Got your tail lamps or your backup lights, I guess, in there. Oh, these look like the tail lamps. Now, there is no red on this kit. Transparent red. So you would paint those maybe with a Tamiya transparent red or testers stoplight red. The only downside with this being so deep is you get a seam line right in there, but you could clean that up and use one of the Molotol paint pens just to make that nice. So again, it's got that promo style rear bumper and front bumper with these two horseshoe type uh, arrangements. Those go into those posts underneath on the back. There are some mold marks, not too bad though. What I would do inside here is paint this all flat black so you don't see it up from underneath the car. There are mold marks underneath the scoops, but they get glued to the hood so you don't even see those. This scoop is really like 1957 Thunderbird kind of stuff. Close, you know? And then uh, there's that nice eagle kind of looking thing. I guess, yeah, that would be the Imperial Eagle or something to that effect right in that spare tire cover. And again, those crazy lake pipes. This is really neat. There's a tachometer front and back. So again, really cool chrome bits. Now the wheel backs are very basic, of course. They're just a disc and then it's got these blades in there. But uh, that's basically them. And then that just leaves this chrome continental kit. It's got a little relief in there. I think that's supposed to hook up into the bumper. Nothing on the back. So again, a lot of really cool stuff. And remember, you can use any of these parts anywhere else in any of your other model kits. So please keep them, keep them for future builds. Here we have our windshield and rear glass, as well as these side quarter windows. And as you can see, this is very basic, so we won't spend too much video time on it. It's all molded as one piece, which was typical of the old promos back in the day. These are holes in the top, and that would be for the uh, for that imperial roof. Remember, there was a little pin sticking down there, and uh, there we also have in the back for locking it in down below. There are some mold marks, but if you paint this over and clean those up a little bit, you won't be able to see them. The other thing you could do is just cut the. Let's see now. If you were building this as a convertible. I think all you need to do is just snip it off here and right there and this whole back end will pop out. And if you wanted to build like that, like I was suggesting, the removable top, I would get rid of the pins in the top of that roof and then uh, cut it like in a curve here, you know, and maybe even remove these. You might have to experiment with that. But then glue this whole glass panel into that Landau roof or the Imperial roof, whatever it is. 
And then you should be able to, uh, with those side tabs, just squeeze them in a little bit and pop them out of the car, pop your convertible one down and use this as a front windshield. Here we have those wonderful white wall tires. We also have our axles and the screws in this bag here, but I'm not gonna open those up in case I lose them. So I'm moving this off to the side. And now let's take a look at these tires. So these are updated AMT tires. They have the wonderful pad printed white wool on here, but they don't actually say Firestone or Goodyear along these sides of the tire or have any of that detail as to the sizes. But there is a brand new tread underneath here, which is really nice. And it also looks like we have a bit of, yep, we have the actual tire shape. Oh, I was wrong. On the back here, it says Firestone and there's the little Firestone emblem right down there. So AMT did actually get the licensing from Firestone for these tires, which is really great. These are replacements for the original Firestone tires from AMT, which just had the straight tread pattern, which was just lines going around. This one actually has a proper tread on it, which is always nice. So you could even use these tires on other AMT kits just to dress them up and make them look better. You know, just for the sake of this video, I thought I would actually do a comparison because I'm always bringing up the new tires versus the old tires. So here is one of the older Firestone tires from AMT that we would have seen in, you know, earlier kits like from RC2 and going back before round two got AMT, bought AMT, I guess. So what we have here is the Firestone lettering and that pie crust edge. So that's similar to the new tire, and that's got the white wall. So I'm just gonna turn this one over so we can see. So Firestone to Firestone. So on the new tire, you got the Firestone logo up here, scripted as well as the little shield. On this one, you have Firestone. It's a bit tighter in here. And then down below, it's just a little dot. And now turning the treads, you can see what I'm talking about here. So on the original, it's just lines that wrap around all the way around this tire. On the new one, it actually has like the same kind of lines. But if you look closely inside, you can see a little bit of a wiggle in there, which denotes that there is an actual tread pattern going on. So the original tires here are actually good on something like AMT's 32 Ford. But these ones would probably not suit it so well on the 32 Ford. These are more like 40s and 50s style. So either way, you can have the original tire or the new one, as long as you got a lot of these in your parts box, because I don't know if AMT has the molds anymore. You can also see that this newer tire looks to be a little bit bigger in diameter on the outside edge. So maybe this is more like a, I don't know, 14 inch tire whereas this might be the more correct 15s. Not too sure how that would measure up, but overall, there's your two tires, the old version and our new one. So again, which one do you like better? Let us know in the comments down below. I do think you can get these new tires in AMT's parts packs. Parts packs, yeah. So look for those if you want to replace older ones in older kits. So now the moment you've all been waiting for, the decal sheet review. So here it is. Look at all those colors on there. Very typical of the 1950s, especially the flames. That's like one of those really old, cool patterns that you saw on all the old model kits back in the day. Here, I'll just move the light right off of there. Just get rid of some of that reflection. Okay, it's a little bit dark, but yeah, look at those flames. That's like the typical model kit flames that came in all these kits way back in the day. Nice to see AMT redid them instead of trying to do like some modern fin design on here. There's all the scallops, which again look nice. They look good on a maybe medium blue color. Here we've got, these must be for the uh, race version. These look like headlight blank outs. So uh, protect the headlights from getting hit by rocks or maybe even eliminate them and just use a screen. We have two California plates. You got a 1959 yellow and black saying Big Imp for Imperial. And then we've got the more modern California ones. Lind Land Yacht, L-N-D Yacht, Land Yacht. Get it? Yeah, oh, there is a uh, instrument panel decal insert. And I was right, it is kind of a aluminum or something. Then we also have these nice pinstripes. 
These ones look like rockets. That's pretty cool. These ones look more like a trophy or something. Then you've got your Racing 59 with the crown down below. We also have our gauges right here. That's for the tachometer. Custom special and crossed racing flags. Now here you get three, so you could use, you know, one on the hood, one on the trunk, and then you've got a spare. Or you could just do one on the hood and two on the doors or something like that. It's all up to you. And it is nice that AMT actually gives you two decals for the tachometer, just in case you lose one. And we also have a 300 horsepower decal for the side. Now, if you want sponsors, you could also get decal sheets from Gopher Racing or even find them in your old model kits. I'm sure there's a ton out there. So again, hope you like these decals. Let me know what you think about them in the comments down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our 1959 Chrysler Imperial model kit. There's a lot of cool customizing ideas in here. How are you going to build yours? Let us know down in the comment section below. Well, if you enjoyed this channel and like these videos, please consider becoming a member by clicking the join button, which you'll find down there somewhere. And uh, if you do that, that will help us out tremendously by giving us some support for our videos and our video creation. So until next time, everybody, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca where you'll find some really great model kits, including cars, figures, and monsters, and many other cool things. So until next time, everyone, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.